Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. I've been a CPA for 25 years and today I'm going to help you set up your company in FreshBooks. So the first thing we need to do after signing up for FreshBooks is to adjust our company settings. So to do so, we go to the upper left corner of our dashboard and click on the cogwheel and then go to settings. This is going to bring up four tabs that we need to fill out and these tabs are pretty much self-explanatory. So under the My Account tab you can uh, change your name if you would like to. It gives you the email address which you used uh, to sign up for the account and then it gives you an option to change your password. In the My Company settings it gives you the name and address of your company, your base currency and your fiscal year end as well as some contact information. Perhaps the most interesting item in the My Company tab is the standard rate. So if you have a standard rate you would like to bill out for all of your employees that perform work for customers, you can enter that standard rate here. On the third tab, you can upload your company logo and choose a color for your documents. Uh, so this logo and theme will be automatically applied to any new uh, invoices, estimates, and proposals. However, when you do create a new invoice, estimate, or proposal, you can change the template if you'd like. Uh, so here we have three templates. We have the simple template, we have the modern template, and we have the classic template. Now, in addition to changing the template, you can choose from two different fonts and you can choose from an infinite number of colors. So if you have a very specific um, company color, you can click here and you can enter the number of that color. I think this is an ASCII code for that color to get the exact color you're looking for. Okay, and so that's how you set up your theme. Now this is your themes. This is not the most advanced invoice customization software. FreshBooks really always sides with simplicity over power, which is very good. This is really the market they're looking for. So if you're just a, if you're a sole proprietor, you got your own business, things are going great, um, but you don't want to spend a lot of time in accounting, you don't need the top level powerful accounting software, you just need something good, then FreshBooks is a great choice for you. Again, it always sides with simplicity over power, which is a good thing if you're looking for an easy to use software. So good looking invoice but not the most powerful customization options. And the final tab is the email notifications and this simply allows you to, to click a checkbox for each item that you would like to have an email notification sent to you. So great, so that's as easy as it is to set up our settings in FreshBooks. The next thing we need to do is to invite our team members to FreshBooks. So FreshBooks comes with one user and then you have to pay $10 per month for each additional user. So in order to set up users we need to go back to our dashboard and then we can go to invite up here in the top right corner and it gives us the five different types of users that we can invite. So admin is uh, just like the owner of the account they can do absolutely anything um, managers can do almost anything but they can't see the financial reports. Um, employees, all they can do is track time and expenses and uh, contractors, they're like employees but they're independent contractors so they can also track their time and expenses. And then the accountant is a very special type of user and this is actually a free user. You don't have to pay ten dollars a month to invite an accountant but there are certain things that only an accountant can do and then there's really very few other things the accountant can do. So the accountant um, can access the reports, categorize expenses, create journal entries. Um, we're going to talk in a minute that they can modify your chart of accounts. So these are things that the accountant user can do that other people can't do, even the owner of the account. So if you need to modify your chart of accounts, you're going to have to have an accountant user. So you either need to find an accountant or if you're confident in your own ability you could invite yourself as a second user as an accountant user using a different email address. If you want more detail about which uh, what features each user can access we can click the see permissions here and then it gives you very detailed analysis of what everybody can do. 
great. Okay, so um, again, I guess we'll walk through this. Let's say we want to invite an admin. All we do is type in their first and last name, give an email address, hit continue. It'll send them an email once they once they respond to the email and uh, get access to the account. Then you will be charged ten dollars a month for that additional user. Great. Okay, the next item that we need to talk about to set up your FreshBooks is to view your chart of accounts. So to view our chart of accounts, we're going to go over to accounting in the left tab, click on accounting, and then under accounting, let's click on chart of accounts. So this gives us our chart of accounts. Now, one thing that's very peculiar about FreshBooks, and I mentioned it before, the owner of the account, the admin of the account, they can't change the chart of accounts. Only the account user can modify the chart of accounts. And again, this is for simplicity. FreshBooks always sides with simplicity. Um, so uh, they expect the owner of the account just to stick with the default chart of accounts. If they think they need to, chart, to change the chart of accounts, they want them speaking to an accountant to make sure that that change is appropriate. Okay, so again, making it very simple, making you stick with the default chart of accounts, which is fine. This chart of accounts uh, is very good. About the only thing I really see you might have to add is an accumulated depreciation account for your property, plant, and equipment. Um, okay, so we have asset accounts, we have liability accounts, and we have equity accounts. Now, uh, your cash account, uh, when we hook up a bank account, all the transactions from that bank account is going to flow into your cash account. Now you'll notice the one type of account not on here, well there actually is a few of these, sorry. Um, so we have our assets, liabilities, equities, income accounts, and then expense accounts. Now expense accounts are treated differently than the other accounts. Expense accounts are called categories and while they do show up here on our chart of accounts you can modify them. You can't modify them here but when you enter an expense you can enter in a brand new operating expense title and it'll create a new expense category which will then show up on our chart of accounts. So to summarize that again, expense accounts can be added by the owner or the admin of the account. But when they add them, they can't add them at the chart of accounts. They have to add them when they're entering expenses and at that point they're called expense categories. Excellent. So that's your chart of accounts in FreshBooks. So the next thing we need to address in setting up our FreshBooks is to connect our bank accounts. So to connect our bank accounts, we're going to go back up to the upper left corner of our dashboard and click our cog wheel and then go down to our bank connections. Now here we see we've already have one bank connected, but we can certainly connect additional banks. So let's say we have an account with Bank of America. Now before we do anything in FreshBooks we need to make sure that we have online access to our Bank of America account. So you need to be able to go to their website, enter a username, enter a password, and get access to your account. If you can't do that then you won't be able to set it up with FreshBooks. FreshBooks is going to use your username and password that you've set up directly with the bank in order to access your account. So make sure you get that set up before going through these steps. Okay, so let's say we want to set up a Bank of America account. We click Bank of America. Okay, now it's going to tell us what it wants to do, and we're just going to say confirm. Okay, and now it popped up on another monitor here. Let me bring it over. And here we go. Now we're going to have to enter our user ID and our password for this Bank of America account. Now I don't have a Bank of America account set up, so I'm not going to be able to demonstrate this. Um, and actually this will be a little bit different for every bank because this is going to really depend on how your bank is set up. So um, just follow the prompts. So here you're going to enter your user ID and your password, again, that you normally use to get onto your Bank of America website. Then follow the prompts. Most likely most banks will ask you which accounts, if you have multiple accounts with them, which accounts you want to connect to your FreshBooks. You can select one account, you can select all accounts, uh, whichever accounts you want. So just follow the prompts to set up your bank account. So once your bank account is connected, we're just going to cancel out of this. 
Okay, you'll see it up here that it is connected. Okay, now once it's connected, you'll never have you should never have to do anything else. If you change passwords, you probably have to come in here and change passwords. Maybe every once in a while you'll have to refresh the connection for whatever reason. But for the most part, you shouldn't have to do everything. All the transactions will flow through automatically and get posted to your cash account um, and you'll be able to go in and then classify them into their appropriate expenses and income accounts okay and we'll go over that in our future tutorials so this is just the first out of our five FreshBooks tutorials so now we've got our bank account set up and connected to FreshBooks and the final thing that we need to do to set up our company in FreshBooks is to import our clients from QuickBooks okay so um, or from any CSV file so a lot of companies are using uh, QuickBooks a lot of them are moving over to FreshBooks as they do so you can export both your customers and your vendors from QuickBooks um, and then import them into FreshBooks but to be clear FreshBooks can import any list of customers from a CSV file okay so let's do that so to get to our customers let's go to our clients okay and then here we can click a button and if we want to we can add a new client manually but that takes an awful lot of time we want to save time so we're going to import them from a CSV file so under more actions here we can do import client and now we can choose file so let me show you what I've got set up for a CSV file so this is my CSV file your first row needs to be the name of the field now it doesn't have to match the exact name of the field in FreshBooks on the next step we're going to be able to kind of map our field shown in row one here to the FreshBooks fields and then the other rows will just be the information so make sure you don't have any rows above the the, the what I show here is the first row you don't want anything above your column names make sure you don't have any blank rows anything like that also make sure your list is on the first tab this is only going to import the first tab of your workbook okay so here is my contact list now notice even if you don't have um, a prior software in order to export things to a CSV file you could still create this CSV file from scratch it would be much much faster to input your client information into this spreadsheet than it will directly entering them into FreshBooks so I'd only do it you know the one time when you're first starting out but if you have you know 50 clients enter them into a spreadsheet the CSV file and then import them rather than directly entering them okay so we have our uh, back to our quick to our FreshBooks um, we're importing clients we're going to choose our file okay and I believe I had this saved in downloads and this is our customer contact list okay now here gives us a chance to map those columns we saw into the FreshBooks fields okay there we go so this maps the uh, fields I have here to the fields that QuickBooks is looking for. Now, if the fields are not exactly the same, if you don't have information split out the same, you might have to take some time getting that CSV file organized so that it's split into the same fields that FreshBooks is looking for. Now, again, the fields don't have to be named the same, right, because of this nice mapping feature here, but you still need to have this, the information broken into the same um, field so like for your address you know some some software keeps the entire uh, street address all in one field other might break the street address into you know street city zip state etc so you need to make sure your information is split up in your CSV file properly okay then I can hit continue um, this is just continue the mapping process so street city state zip and country I don't think I have a country field so we can leave that blank okay import clients six clients have been added okay there we go and that's how easy it is to import my clients 
Now you'll see I've done this multiple times, <laughs> so I've actually duplicated clients in here. Make sure you don't do that in your own file. Okay, so that's importing clients. Um, the next task we have in FreshBooks is to import our vendors. Okay, well that's going to be extremely similar. So let's go up here. I've created a CSV file for my vendors. Okay, again, make sure your column headings is in, are in the very first row. No rows above them, not even blank rows. They have to be in the very first row. And then you have one vendor per line for as, ma as many vendors as you need. So let's import this. So to find your vendors, you probably go to payments, uh, maybe expenses. Yep, there we go. Under expenses, we have vendors. Uh, you can add vendors manually. Again, if you have a lot of vendors to add, even if you can't export them from other software, just add them in a CSV file. It'll be much faster to type that in, and then you can import it. To import it, we go to More Actions, Import Vendors, choose our file. Again, I have them in the Downloads, and this is the Vendor Contact List. Okay, now just like with customers, we have to map it, so we have the organization. Um, I, I call that the vendor name in my file, and then we have a first name. Nope, these are all organizations in my vendor file, so I don't have a first and last name. I don't have an account number. Um, I do have an email address. I don't believe I have a website. Um, I probably have a phone number. Yep, there's a phone number. Okay, street address, city, state zip code and I don't have a country okay so I'm going to import those fields oops your vendors couldn't be imported okay so I have some mandatory information missing oh vendor names already in use okay so it's not going to let me duplicate my vendors like I accidentally duplicated the customers and so otherwise this would be working it's just I've already completed this step once and so it's not going to let me duplicate my vendors which is actually a really good feature um, but that's exactly how you would go about importing your vendors great so That completes our first tutorial on FreshBooks. Um, so we do have four more tutorials in QuickBook in FreshBooks. If you would search FreshBooks Quick uh, FreshBooks tutorials from Fit Small Business, you can easily find those. I'll also include links to them in our QuickBooks description. If you don't already have a copy, your own subscription to FreshBooks, I highly encourage you to uh, subscribe to one. You can get it free for 30 days um, or 50% off for three months and we do have a link over to FreshBooks in our YouTube description. My name is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business and I hope this tutorial was helpful.